Global Systems Knowledge Translation Center presents Pregnancy and Women with Spinal Cord Injury. This slideshow is based on research conducted by the Spinal Cord Injury Model Systems and serves as a resource for individuals with spinal cord injury and their supporters. The Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center is funded by the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living and Rehabilitation Research. This resource summarizes available research on how women can prepare for pregnancy, labor, and delivery after a spinal cord injury. This information can help women with spinal cord injury learn about how to work with their health care team to ensure that both the mother and baby are healthy. Having a spinal cord injury, SCI, does not affect a woman's ability to naturally become pregnant, carry, and deliver a baby. So your decision to have children is made in much the same way as anyone else. In making your choice, it is important to know the key facts. Women with all levels of injury have had children after spinal cord injury. There are always demands and challenges in parenting, but there are ways to manage them. Positive aspects of parenting usually outweigh the difficulties. What do I do if I am pregnant or want to get pregnant? Here is a checklist of things to do to help you plan for a healthy pregnancy. Getting a complete gynecology exam will give you the opportunity to get preconception counseling, pap smear testing, assessment of immunizations, family history, as well as screening for genetic testing. Talk to a rehabilitation doctor who knows about women's health after spinal cord injury. This doctor, sometimes known as a physiatrist, can talk with you about your injury and explain what it means for your pregnancy, labor, and delivery. A physiatrist can also help you find an obstetrician or other medical specialists you may need during your pregnancy. Getting your medicines checked is important because many prescriptions and over-the-counter medicines are not to be taken if you are pregnant or want to get pregnant. When you go to the obstetrician, take all of your medicines with you. You may need to adjust your medicines to keep your baby healthy. Getting a complete urologic checkup of your urinary tract, kidneys, bladder, ureters, before you get pregnant is important. You and your obstetrician will use the test results to plan and prepare as your body changes during pregnancy. Note, tell your doctor if you are pregnant or think you might be pregnant. Some tests, such as x-rays, can harm your baby. Your injury does not impact your baby. Your baby will develop as all babies do. This means you need to follow the advice of your obstetrician to take care of your baby. You may also have some of the same common discomforts of pregnancy that other women have, such as headaches, body aches and pains, numbness or tingling, fatigue, nausea and vomiting, dizziness, need to urinate often, heartburn and indigestion, swelling in the feet and ankles, hemorrhoids, shortness of breath, bleeding gums, congestion or nosebleeds, constipation. Your risk for secondary conditions related to your spinal cord injury may increase as you progress during pregnancy. This risk does not mean that you should not get pregnant. It simply means that you need to work with your obstetrician to take steps to prevent secondary conditions if you can and manage problems that do develop. You and your obstetrician may need to call on other specialists during your pregnancy. Some specialists might include a urologist, respiratory therapist, physical therapist, and occupational therapist. If you have had posture changes due to a curved spine, broken pelvis, or dislocated hip, there may be less room for your baby to grow to full term. It is impossible to predict when or if secondary conditions will develop during your pregnancy. Some may occur early on in pregnancy and go away in time. Others may continue to be a problem throughout pregnancy and delivery. What should I expect in each trimester? During your first trimester, you will see the start of many changes with your body. 
Headache and nausea are common during pregnancy, but a pounding headache and nausea may also be signs of autonomic dysreflexia. You are at risk for AD at any time if your injury level is T6 or above. You and your obstetrician should have a plan in place to manage AD if it develops. You are at risk for a urinary tract infection at any time. Your obstetrician may prescribe an antibiotic to prevent an infection during your pregnancy. If you get a UTI, it must be treated right away because the infection can trigger early labor as your pregnancy progresses. Hormone and iron supplements are usually prescribed by your obstetrician. These medications may impact your bowel management in one of two ways. You may experience constipation or diarrhea. If you are constipated, you should ask your obstetrician about drinking more water, eating foods that are higher in insoluble fiber, or taking a stool softener or laxative. If you have diarrhea, you should ask your obstetrician about drinking more water, eating foods that are higher in soluble fiber, adjusting your dose if you are taking a stool softener or laxative until your stool is of proper consistency, and doing your bowel program more often if you are having accidents. During your second trimester, you will experience weight gain because your baby is growing quickly. This may lead to other changes. Weight gain can make it hard to do some daily activities like you did before you got pregnant. For example, transfers or pushing your wheelchair may be harder. You may get tired quicker. You might talk with a physical or occupational therapist to find new ways to get everyday tasks done. A few suggestions to make things easier are to make fewer transfers, use a sliding board to transfer, or get help from others. You can also rent or buy a power wheelchair. You may need to change your bladder management as your growing baby puts pressure on your bladder. Your bladder cannot hold as much urine as usual and may spasm. Women who use intermittent catheterization will likely need to catheterize more often or switch to an indwelling catheter often called a Foley catheter, during pregnancy. Pressure ulcers are always a concern, but your risk for getting a pressure ulcer increases during pregnancy. Weight gain can change your posture and center of gravity to make it harder to lift your body to transfer without scraping your skin. Weight gain can also put more pressure on your bony areas when you are sitting or lying down. You might talk with a physical or occupational therapist to find new ways to get everyday tasks done. Here are a few suggestions. Check your skin more often. Your obstetrician can also include skin inspections as part of your prenatal exams. Finally, you can do pressure reliefs much more often. See our Skin Care and Pressure Sores and Spinal Cord Injury Fact Sheet on the MSKTC website. There is a chance you may have changes in muscle spasms. They may get worse if you normally have them, or you may develop muscle spasms if you normally do not have them. During the third trimester, you and your baby will continue to get bigger. Your growing baby pushes on your diaphragm. This can make it harder for you to breathe, take deep breaths, and cough. You might talk with a respiratory therapist to find ways to improve your breathing. Here are a few suggestions. Your obstetrician may suggest breathing exercises. Your obstetrician may also need to test how well your lungs are working if you have a higher level injury. Pressure from the growing baby can slow blood flow to your legs and feet, causing them to swell. Talk to your obstetrician about medicine to help keep clots from forming if you have had blood clots in the past. Talk to a physical or occupational therapist to see if range of motion exercises or changes in positioning can improve blood flow. Prop your feet up as much as possible. Wear compression support hose. Get extra rest. What happens during labor and delivery? Women with SCI need to plan for labor and delivery in the same way as other women. Attend childbirth classes. Get your nursery ready for the baby. Know what to do when labor starts. Get a car seat and know how to install it.
Pack your labor bag for the hospital. Line up help for after the birth. Stock up on diapers, wipes, and other baby essentials. Stock your fridge and pantry with groceries. Some women with SCI can experience many of the common signs of labor such as water breaks or mucus leakage, feelings of fear and worry, diarrhea, unusual pain or backache, strong regular contractions, tightening in your abdomen, breathing easier, pressure in the pelvis. You and your obstetrician need to plan for your delivery early in your pregnancy. You still need to pay close attention to issues with autonomic dysreflexia, urinary tract infection, bowel management, bladder management, skin care, muscle spasms, and blood flow. Also, take a tour of the labor, delivery, and patient rooms. And women with CSI need to be aware of other labor considerations. A full-term pregnancy is 39 or 40 weeks, but it is best to start watching for signs of labor at about 28 weeks. At that point, your obstetrician might check your cervix weekly. Women with paraplegia can learn how to check for labor by feeling the uterus. Women with tetraplegia can talk with the obstetrician about a contraction monitor that you can use at home. Women with a T10 level of injury or above may not feel labor pain. Women with injuries below T10 may feel the uterus contracting. Feelings of early contractions may come and go as labor continues. There may be changes in breathing or spasticity. AD can occur in women with any level of injury during labor, even with injury levels below T6. The best way to prevent AD during labor is to use a continuous epidural anesthesia. This provides a long-lasting numbness during labor. During delivery, there is no need to have a cesarean section, often called a C-section, simply because you have an SCI. In fact, most women can deliver vaginally no matter what their level of injury. Talk with your obstetrician about the type of delivery that is best for you if there are concerns. In some cases, a doctor may use a vacuum cup or forceps to help deliver the baby. Some things to keep in mind for after the delivery. You may feel faint or dizzy when you sit up after delivery. Sit up slowly, wear elastic hose or an abdominal binder. You may decide to breastfeed your baby. Most women with spinal cord injury can breastfeed, but you need to watch for problem issues. You may notice more bladder spasticity as you breastfeed. You may produce less milk if you have a loss of feeling in your nipples. This is because nipple contact is the trigger for breasts to produce milk. Some women have an episiotomy during delivery to widen the opening of the vagina. Doctors often suggest the use of a heat lamp to help heal the skin near the episiotomy. Women with spinal cord injury should not use a heat lamp on that area because they won't be able to feel burning. For additional resources on spinal cord injury, please visit the Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center website at www.msktc.org.